the nature and the scale of the suffering that is going on in that country is, is, is almost incomprehensible, and it is, it is truly heartbreaking. And, and obviously we will continue uh, as, a, as a government and as a people to look at any number of ways that we can assist in this situation. As uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper continues his tour to the Middle East, he's now in Jordan today. He was responding to questions when he was receiving an honorary doctorate. And that had to do with Syria and the civil war there. Prime Minister Harper says that neither side um, w uh, being successful in this war, but announcing millions of dollars of aid for refugees for the area. Simon Kent is our Sun News contributor, and uh, you've followed this for a long time, even before you joined us here at Sun Media. This has been, you've traveled all the world, uh, all over the world, working mm. in different media outlets in the UK and in and, 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 uh, Australia. It's a problem that isn't going away. It's almost pick your faction who's fighting this time. That's right. It is factional. It's, it's Shia versus Sunni. And uh, this fight is going to go on and on and on. Mm -hmm. and, and Mr. Harper did a very good thing. He's sending aid. That's something constructive that Canada can do. Mm -hmm. It's a very small band-aid on a great big gaping wound. Mm -hmm. There are millions of displaced people that are flooding that part of the world. I'd love to think that this will help if it filters down to the people that need it. But this is not without precedent, Adrian. You look back to Europe in the 1600s, there was something called the Thirty Years' War. Mm -hmm. It started out as amongst Christians, amongst Protestants and Catholics. That rumbled on for 30 years and that tore Europe apart. And that was part of, of a terrible time in history. We're seeing that again. Mm -hmm. This fight in Syria between Sunnis and Shias, backed respectively by big powers in uh, what you see in the House of Saud and also in um, Iran. This fight is going to go on and on and on. We could be seeing a 30 years war starting in the Middle East. It's going to bring a lot of people into it and it doesn't look good. Uh, kudos to Harper for speaking strongly, mm -hmm. speaking strongly, trying to get people to talk with goodwill. Men and women of goodwill are needed here. We're not seeing them at the moment. We also, of course, uh, know that uh, Bashar al-Assad continues to rule with his iron fist. Um, a few months ago, we were talking about whether or not he used chemical weapons on his own, um, his own uh, co uh, countrymen. Yes. He, uh, from all accounts, he clearly did. Uh, I know that there are some disputing accounts of that specifically. And the killing goes on. And the murdering goes on. And we don't see an end in sight. I know that there are small factions of um, rebel groups that are, are popping up that are trying to help, even in Canada, helping those um, on the ground in Syria. But really, with so many refugees, Simon, and uh, for starters, it's, it's so... It's so even hard to manage that logistically. The end is not coming soon. No. The end is still a long way away. Look, I hate to use this analogy, but I will. This is like the terrorist Olympics. People mm -hmm. are coming from all around the world to pick up weapons and fight for their chosen side. There's a lot of money flowing in through backdoor channels that, that are funding this fight, and it is going to go on. Bashar, Bashar al-Assad is not going to step down. He's a dictator, mm -hmm. and he's a dictator for a reason. He's a strong man. Look at this UN meeting in Montreux at the moment. You have all the people, uh, all the UN's... Um, talk people there and they love to talk the UN does talking very very well but it's not stopping this bloodshed and the Syrians have already got up uh, Bashar al-Assad's uh, representative and said this is going to go on we have a right to exist and they're claiming that right and it's also claiming a right to kill their foes religious and otherwise any um, very little end in sight the images of course that we're showing at home Shocking. to everybody they're are awful. They're, they're, and they're that's horrible. only what we know yeah that's exactly right that's and there's only and I'm, I'm going to speak uh, a little bit later mm. to someone who is with uh, uh, the United Nations Nations High Commission on Refugees, mm. and, and you know they they ostensibly have just stopped counting um, how, how many refugees Isn't are there. Isn't that at tragic? This point. It's like uh, uh, watching this slow motion car crash mm -hmm. that goes on and on and on. It's hypnotic. You can't look away from it. Sadly, the the human collateral and the human damage. I don't think we're ever going to know. But I also think this is going to go on because there doesn't seem to be any goodwill on either side. There doesn't seem to be people stepping up to the mark to try and bring, bring peace. Bashar al-Assad cannot step down. If he does, that's He's finished and mm -hmm. his family's finished. Everything for him is finished. He'll keep fighting with the support of Iran and, and the Saudis are involved as well. They are all looking for power and influence. This is like a vortex. It's a whirlpool. It's sucking in all these nations from all around the Middle East and they're all being brought in. Remember the Arab Spring. No one talks about that anymore mm -hmm. because you look at the neighbouring countries, the Arab Spring went straight to winter. I see a winter coming over the Middle East and what, what we're seeing now in these images is only a fraction of what's going on. The, the, the world will be horrible. 
horrified. When um, before his Obamacare failure, mm. uh, pr the president of the United States was talking about Syria. He drew fake lines in the sand. Uh, men, a lot of criticism for uh, Obama's response to what is going on in Syria. I don't agree with the notion that mm -hmm. the United States should be the world's police. I don't believe okay. that, and I know that that's where a lot of people look for for yes. them. But have we heard anything out of the administration lately well, on this? Uh, Barack Obama has a lot of manifest failures to deal with in mm -hmm. his administration. He seemed to stumble eagerly from one disappointment to the next. His policies never seem to work. He speaks bravely. That line in the sand you mentioned, that was mentioned by John Kerry. Mm -hmm. But John Kerry has never drawn a line in the sand. He couldn't comprehensively blur. I don't think America wants to get involved. I don't think the West wants to get involved. What Canada is doing may help the refugee crisis by uh, contributing money. I really honestly hope that money reaches the people it should. Goodness knows where the money ends up. But uh, there is a counter-argument. Put a fence around the Middle East, Middle East and mm -hmm. let them duke it out. But that really is not a humanitarian way to go no. about it. You've got to get people to talk and you've got to get people to sit down and be prepared to give something. I wish that was happening in Montreux mm -hmm. this week with the UN talks. It's not. We're not seeing it. The collateral damage is, is, is too incredible mm. at this point. And how does this country recover yeah. from being, tearing itself apart? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is going to be uh, intergenerational trying mm. to rebuild Syria if they ever get the chance. All right, Simon, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank Simon you. Simon Kent is our Sun News contributor joining me in our Toronto studio.